for being here. We know it's a tremendous effort. It's a great distance. It's a lot of expense. And it's back to school time. And we understand all of that. And our hearts are overflowed with the love we feel from your presence here tonight and the sacrifices you've made to be here. But I hope that you find the commitment that you've made to be here will be far outweighed by the joy and the love and the laughter that's here to share the minister pulled uh, me aside, and she says, we never get families like this who are so awesome in the church together. And I would, I would agree. Um, it wasn't too many trips down here uh, that Kirk and I, I was not nervous to come down. I was looking forward to coming down and enjoying the family, and uh, Kirk was too, and it just was a natural fit. So, and if you look at the pictures on the table, those of you who've been here just a little while, these are pictures taken of Kent and Madison at the same time, you know, uh, she's the princess. He's the, you know, Power Ranger. Um, they're doing the cheese at smiles together. They look really awesome in junior high school together. You should see that one. And the what? Oh, swingers. Oh, she named the tables. Okay, and they're swinging. They're all the same age. I, it, these two were absolutely destined to be married. Uh, from the get-go, and uh, when we were going through these pictures, I said, you would have been his girlfriend his entire life, without question, and uh, it's just, and the, the fit for the families has been the same, but please feel the gratitude in our hearts for everybody being here, and we're so excited. Someone was asking us if we were nervous, and I said, absolutely not. I just don't want the weekend to end. There just won't be enough time. Anyway, um, I do want to thank you, baby, for uh, Tonight, Kirk, you, most of you know, but Kirk was my first date, and I married him. It worked out really well. And uh, thank you tonight for hosting us. You're going to hear from him a little bit later. But I'm going to introduce to you now um, uh, my junior prom date, actually. Uh, Rick and I have been friends forever. I, I don't know when we weren't friends. Um, and so Rick and I have been friends forever, and we went uh, to prom together as friends, and it was just wonderful. And Rick is with us here to, uh, this weekend celebrating as a good friend. But uh, Rick is also our, our state senator. He is also a pastor. He was a producer for the Sally Jesse Raphael Show. Who says Collinsville doesn't rock? It's awesome. And our class, woo! Anyway, but... Um, 
I asked Kit tonight, who would you like to come to bless you and Madison and this meal? And he said, can you ask Rick? And so thank you so much for being here. And I give you Rick Brinkley, who will bless us. Thank you all. If everyone would bow their heads with me, we'll pray. Father God, we come before you and uh, just ask for just a moment that we forget what is happening outside of these four walls and begin to focus our hearts on you and the love that you created and the uh, love that you poured into Kent and Madison. Uh, we sit here tonight as families uh, celebrating what has led up to this point, the things that only each family knows, but the beginning of a new beginning. And we just ask, Lord, your blessings upon them and all that they do. We ask, Lord, you ask, we ask your blessings upon their families, those who are traveling here, that they be able to have safe journey. We ask your blessings upon our food, upon our conversations, and upon our friendships, friendships that walked in the door, and new friendships that will walk out the door. But Lord, of all the things that we ask right now, we ask that today be the day that Kent and Madison love each other the least, that that love continue to grow from this day forevermore. We know what they have been their entire lives growing up, but now we set a new vision of what they will be in the generations to come from this. We give you thanks again, Lord, for all the love that you have poured into them, the love that you created, the love that you brought together, and the love that we celebrate tonight. We pray these things, Lord, in Jesus' most holy of names. Amen. you know so well um, the joy that we felt when um, we knew that we were gonna have a little girl. Now Madison came a little early and that was very nervous for us. She was very small actually she was uh, brought her home and she as small as my shoe <laughs> was. A very special baby. Uh, we, we treat her as a little miracle baby as well. <laughs> For us, Madison is uh, so precious in that she has a very gentle spirit, but she has a very, um, it's a strength about her. And I, I think that was exhibited even from the very beginning. And so we get to see the, the strong strength in her character, but she has a, a very warm and gentle spirit. So that. She's always been fun to play with and, and a joy to it. I know getting on the floor and playing, uh, uh, dress up and, and a game that was called Pretty Pretty Princess allowed you to put on a little, uh, if you want a piece, you get to put on a little plastic jewelry and of course I'm having to do that as well and uh, tea parties with her. Mm -hmm. We had a picture window in the dining room and she would love to look for her dad to come in from work and uh, she's a daddy's girl and um, mm. she said yes I'm his princess and that's the truth. And she used to sing a little song that she was precious, and she would call it Preppish. I'm Preppish. And she would, mm hmm, hmm, hmm. But she loved that little song. And then she always wanted to go to Old McDonald's, not just <laughs> McDonald's for chicken nuggets, but she'd call it Old McDonald's. <laughs> she enjoyed um, art immensely. And then she loved sports too. She played soccer and she played softball. She went to Faith Christian School and uh, played, you know, on the state championship team. And uh, so she loved her church, and she was very involved in mission trips. 
We did a daddy-daughter date night and we planned a big event and made it very special and she looked forward every year to Valentine's um, where she would get to go on a special date with her dad mm -hmm. and then we did a mother-daughter tea and she helped me a lot with the creativeness of planning the teas and planning those uh, daddy-daughter date nights. And she's still coordinating and planning <laughs> events for mm -hmm. everybody. Around. She loves planners and she is a, a list maker and very organized in, um, in her planning and so you know we would tease but you know a great gift that you can give her is to um, take her out to look at all the planners that are available <laughs> and then let her select her favorite planner for that year. Her friends in high school called her Mommy Madison because she would always see after them and make sure that whatever event they were going to that they all had the snacks they needed, they all had the schedule, they all knew what was going on. And so she was always nurturing and loving and kind of that mommy to her group of friends. We have grown to love the Weinkauf family. Our family gets together a lot and we have, you know, kind of made a tradition for a, a long time of going to grandparents' house, you know, for dinner on Sundays um, after church and um, we still do. And we do a lot of things together. And it was good to find that the Weinkaufs have a great family that loves to, uh, spend time together and do fun things together. And so I think for me, the joy is that we have the opportunity to um, be at the church to witness their covenant commitment one to another. And then I think together is, you know, just a, two families just planning a great time of celebration for our children finding their life mate. My first, obviously, recollection of Ken is that he was so big. He was just you know, had broad shoulders, and he was just, in fact, in the in the delivery room, I said, suit him up, and turns out he would play football. Always negotiating as he would get older, for sure. Uh, I told him it was not a democracy around here, it was a dictatorship. And while I didn't always want to be in charge, God put me in charge, and that's what I have to carry out till he's 18. The things I remember are that, that through his life, food's important, <laughs> and Sports are important. They were playing t-ball, uh, three, four years old. Mm -hmm. There's so many kids that they got a first baseman, second baseman, uh, shortstop, third baseman, and then they've got an extra one in between those. He's playing second base, so the kid hits the ball off the tee, and it's kind of heading Kent's direction, but, and so they both go for the ball to, to feel the ball, and they run into each other and fought, you know, just end over end. And I'm thinking, oh boy, we're gonna get the tears and wailing when they get up. The, the one kid's kind of, you know, crying a little bit and Kent gets up and the first thing he does, he's got the ball in his mitt and he takes the ball and throws it first. Then he turns around to me and is like, was that my ball or his? And I was like, well, that's your ball, you're good. He gets up, he's hungry. Yeah, he just protects his food. And he when protects he was his a, food, yeah. When he was a baby eating, he would, he would, if there was more than one jar, he would have his arm kind of around the other jar to make sure it didn't leave while we were working on this jar. And he just, he kind of always was concerned about where the next meal was going to come from or, or what it was going to be. He uses his mind a lot. He's very interested in business, very business oriented. Uh, economics is, that's real important to him. <laughs> he, he just hated mowing the lawn and he came into me he said I'm gonna tell you one thing he said I'm gonna grow up and make enough money that I'm gonna hire someone to do your lawn for the rest of your life and I said you know what I'm gonna remember that I'm gonna remember that you're gonna hire out my lawn to be done for the rest of your life and you know that's really good with me but until you get there right now we have the lawn to do but he would get up at 5.30 in the morning and go cook breakfast for the homeless. And he did that on his own. We never got him up or anything else like that. He kind of started that mission work with the homeless through Asbury and his youth group there. And he just took that on. That really concerned him all of his life. Again, it has, it, it, you know, it's around food. You know, he's not only worried about himself eating, he's worried about other people eating. But I would have to say in high school, when a high school kid will get themselves up at five o'clock, to be downtown at 5.30 in the morning to cook. God's placed something in your heart. My gosh, he was so far conservative. In fact, he was never interested in talking to or dating anyone or having as a friend anybody who was liberal at all. 
So that was kind of interesting too, yet he has the soft heart. <laughs> he can give a bear hug like no other, I can tell you that much. He used to squeeze my neck so hard I couldn't breathe, but uh, he's a, a great guy, good friend. I had said, Curtis, you know, Ruth's are awfully nice girl. Certainly Ruth has some nice friends for Kent. And he goes, yeah, you know, and he just kind of brushed me off. But when Donita also came to him uh, and said, you know, the same thing, and neither Donita nor I knew that either had said that. Madison and her college roommate had gone to a wedding of two of her friends, um, Curtis and Ruth. And Curtis uh, and Kent knew one another at Colorado School of Mines and had begun their friendship there. And so Madison had gone to the wedding of uh, Curtis and Ruth and Kent was actually in the wedding. And it was a destination wedding. Well, we were headed down for Curtis and Ruth's wedding. I'm always curious when you go to weddings, being single, you know, who's gonna, what kind of girls are gonna be there. And I, I uh, pulled up the phone and I showed him everybody's Facebook video, or Facebook photo and uh, we stumbled upon Madison, and he said, wait a second, and he took another look, and then he took his eyes off the road, and he, <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a dangerous drive for a while, but uh, I remember distinctly Kent seeing Madison's Facebook and thinking, oh, she looks pretty, or actually he said she's hot, so. The whole night I was trying to figure out, you know, how to go talk to her, kind of building the anticipation up in my head, finally get a chance to meet her, uh, and it's more of just a casual, hello, how are you doing, in a group setting, and that was kind of it. I wouldn't say I had like that connection right then, but as dinner, as we sat down for dinner, I remember him at his table at the wedding party, and then I was at my table. And we would kind of, I would say, flirt with eye exchanges, kind of like glancing at each other and smiling, and then looking away kind of thing. And then Ruth actually came over in the middle of the dinner and we asked Kristen and I, we were like, hey, um, Jason and Kent want to go out afterwards. Do y'all want to? And we're like, yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. And so Ruth was like, okay, great. And so she told him that we were going to go. And then as the night went on, Kristen and I were kind of like, well, that's not really what we do. We don't really go out. It'd be like our first time to actually do something like that. We were a little uneasy about it. And we're like, let's just go back up to the hotel room. Uh, we ended up waiting on them in the lobby of the hotel uh, for a while, and they never ended up coming. Uh, so honestly, you could say that my first encounter with Madison, she stood me up. So after my wedding, uh, when Kent and I were hanging out, he asked me, he kept pushing and pushing uh, more to find out more information about Madison and kind of her background, and uh, most importantly, if she was single. Ruth texted me about a month later and it's like, hey, do you want to go on a date with Kent, the best man from the wedding, and Curtis and I? I was like, oh, well, I guess they're coming down to Fort Worth. They need to find somebody for Kent to date or go on a date with so he's not like a third wheel. I remember when Kent came um, to pick her up and, you know, such a gentleman. You know, he came up to meet us and uh, came in and we were able to visit with him. And um, he just um, did a wonderful job of seeing to her and opening the car door for her and doing all those things that you pray for. And we went to dinner at this place called Lily's and it was pretty good. Um, it was a little more of a casual kind of hole in the wall place or? Uh, it was fancier. <laughs> <laughs> the chicken fried steak was expensive. So I would say it was a little fancier. Okay. I remember I ordered chicken fried steak. I hope you wouldn't have mind because <laughs> I didn't want him to think like I had an eating problem or I, I love food, so I wanted him to know that right off the bat. Um, and then from there, we went to uh, a fondue place. At the fondue place, I remember uh, Ruth and I went to the restroom, and when I went to the restroom, she like, so how do you think it's going? And I'm like, I think it's going good. And then I think we came back, and in the meantime, I think Curtis and Kent were talking about the date. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if y'all were or not. They were. But then Curtis and Ruth got back together sometime during the night and were talking about what each of us said. And then I know Ruth came back to me and was like, Kent says it's going well. <laughs> so we were all doing this like So it felt like middle school a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was good. It was fun and 
afterwards we went to go leave Fort Worth uh, and this is where all the trouble uh, started. Uh, we went to the parking garage at the top where we've parked and I had a security system on there and it wasn't working uh, correctly and I wanted to get frustrated but I didn't want to get frustrated in front of Madison either. Um, so I tried to keep my cool uh, as much as I could and try to figure out what, what the problem was. And in the meantime, uh, it was taking long enough that uh, Ruth and Madison decided to go to a coffee shop for mm -hmm. 30 minutes, an hour. <laughs> Car was still like, rah, 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 like the alarm going off. Yeah, but then AAA called uh, Curtis and said that they were there. So they're like, okay, good. So we get there and he's like, I can't go up the parking garage. So Kent and Curtis had to uh, push the car, push the all, car. all the way down uh, seven stories to the bottom for the tow truck to yeah. be able to tow it. As the alarm is still going off mm -hmm. and security guards asking, are you still in this car? Mm -hmm. And in the end, I was just hoping that we had enough of a date at the first part of it to maybe get a second <laughs> date. And I ended up telling her later that I, would, I owed her a first date. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, this, our second date was either the next week or the weekend after that, and it was Super Bowl Sunday. I was trying to leave to get back to a fraternity chapter meeting, and I was sitting on Madison's parents' couch watching the game with her, and I was trying to read the situation because in my mind, you know, I really wanted to kiss her. I thought that she would like to be kissed, and I thought the moment was there. It's just, it, the opportunity didn't arise. The whole time we were watching the Super Bowl, and I, you know, I was saying I needed to go and I needed to get back to Tulsa by nine o'clock, I think was our chapter meeting. And I'm waiting for her to kind of give me a signal or just you know, a little bit of body language. But I was taught to be like, the guy has to do the first move, so don't do anything. So I didn't do a thing. Just the whole game, I couldn't even tell you who was playing in the game, uh, let alone you know, the score. So I told her I had to leave. And on my way out the front door on the front porch, I asked her if I could kiss her. And I was like, yes. <laughs> I got all goody. And then it was really quick that I remember just like a peck and then he went on his way. And then I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I remember going back in the house and you know how girls do like the, like I don't know how to explain it. You just get so excited and you wanna text all your friends. Uh, it wasn't as spontaneous as I would have wanted it to be, but there was no way I was leaving there without a kiss. <laughs> I mean, they went from, you know, going on a double date with Ruth and Curtis to someone was going to either Dallas or coming to Tulsa every single <laughs> weekend after that. So they, they started dating and talking to each other from that moment on. We didn't have anything more to do with. The next time we knew, Madison was moving up to Tulsa. Yeah, really. But I always told myself, I am never moving out of Texas, no matter what. And I think it's funny how love and a guy that you really cherish and love will change that for you. Okay, so he texted me a Sunday before, so it was like a week in advance, and he said, hey, do you wanna to go to the Phil Brook Christmas tree lighting with me next Saturday? And I would have to say instantly when I got that text, my heart did stop. And I, I don't know if it was like I knew he was going to propose or like I knew that he's not this planned and that he is up to something kind of thing. So my plan was to kind of take her back there, meander through um, their garden area where it was all lit up, then propose to her. Well, the weather had a different plan. Uh, some more cold weather came uh, and the trees were iced over and it was very cold. And I had planned on doing a nice dinner afterwards to celebrate with whatever family members were in town that night. And I kind of played it off that it was a celebratory dinner for my job that I had just gotten. And she was taking a while, and was taking her time, which normally she's on time, but for some reason today, she was kind of taking her time and I'm sitting here looking at my watch and I'm thinking, well, I need to be there at five right when they close so we can get in, otherwise we won't be able to get in at all. And got her in the car, barely made it there. My mom's texting me on the way asking, you know, saying that the lady at Philbrook says we need to get there as soon as possible. They're about to close the door. We finally get there. And there was nobody there. The parking lot was empty. 
they're just kind of quiet. There was a security guard and then um, two people working at the front desk that took our tickets. And so right when we walked in, uh, we were walking around to all these doors that go out to the garden of the Philbrook. And they say, garden closed due to inclement weather. <laughs> she goes, I don't think we're supposed to be here. I think it's closed. Are you, are you sure that uh, that this is open today or they still have this going on? I was like, yeah, I'm sure. You know, I called, I have tickets. I convinced her uh, that, you know, we were supposed to be there. And we kind of went out the back door and it was really cold. And I'm sure at that point she was questioning why we were still going through with this. And so we're walking around and I finally get to that spot. And, but I, you know, had her look back up at the house. Uh, I said, I have one last Christmas present for you before you go down to Fort Worth. Uh, to spend Christmas with your family. I opened the box and I kneeled down and I, you know, I looked into her eyes and I said, um, Madison, you're the most incredible person that I could ever ask for. Um, you are truly a caring person. Um, you're original and your own and you see me the way that nobody else sees me. Um, and I just told her how much she had meant to me and, uh, and I asked her if she would marry me. I remember just being like, just I, gleaming and yes, yes. I was surprised that he actually proposed, but I kind of had that suspicion. I was surprised. I think one of the first questions I had was, did you ask my dad? <laughs> because I had no idea when he had asked him. He's so sneaky about that. It's you and me, 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 it's you and